I'm taking a road trip to visit some of the locks along the Trent Severn Waterway. There's some history, science, and engineering to cover, so let's dive in. Well, not literally. Behind me is Lock 20 Ashburnham. It's one of four locks on the canal located in Peterborough. This canal was originally proposed for military purposes, but they fairly quickly realized it wasn't suitable because with all the locks that would be needed, it would be too slow for that purpose. But in 1833, construction began as a commercial canal. It took several decades, thanks in part to political wrangling, and it wasn't actually finished until 1920. By that time, it was no longer fit for its original purpose as a commercial canal because the size of the ships for commercial purposes greatly exceeded the size for which the canal had been designed and built. The same thing has happened to a bunch of other canals as well. The Welland Canal, elsewhere in Ontario, is now on its fourth iteration, each one larger than the last because the ships kept getting bigger. And the same thing happened to the Panama Canal. There's a size of ship called Panamax that's designed to be the largest that will fit through the Panama Canal and its locks. But ocean-going vessels have exceeded that size, and so the Panama Canal has had to expand the size of its locks and its canals. Since this waterway was no longer fit for its original military purpose or its subsequent commercial purpose, it's become a leisure waterway. Let's talk about how this lock works, and if we're lucky, maybe even see it in action. The operation of this sort of lock is pretty simple. One gate is closed while the other is open so boats can enter the lock then that gate is closed. There are valves to allow water to flow into the lock from the upper canal when boats need to be lifted up, and to allow water to flow from the lock into the lower canal when boats need to be lowered. Once the water level in the lock matches the water level in the section of the canal where the boats are headed, the gate is opened. Easy peasy. Sometimes when the elevation change is on the large side, it makes more sense to put multiple locks than to have one large lock. That's the case here at locks 16 and 17 at Healy Falls between Campbellford and Havelock. It's the same operating principle, it's just two locks back to back. And that gate right there is both the upper gate of the lower lock and the lower gate of the upper lock. But there are other completely different types of locks on the Trent Severn waterway. Let's go look at them now. This is lock 21, otherwise known as the Peterborough lift lock. It's the next one immediately north of the lock where we started this video. But as you can see, it's a completely different type of lock. Let's talk about how it works, and again, hopefully, see it in action. Remember learning about a Greek mathematician named Archimedes? The story goes that he was lowering himself into a bathtub full of water and observed water spilling out. This gave him an idea so great that he supposedly jumped out of the tub and ran naked down the street shouting, Eureka! He actually came up with two ideas about the displacement of fluids. One is that if you immerse an object in a fluid, the volume of displaced fluid equals the volume of the object. Very handy for determining the volume of an irregularly shaped object like, say, a human. But there's another discovery of his which we know as Archimedes' principle. If you float an object in liquid, the weight of the liquid that gets displaced is equal to the weight of the object, and that's one of the principles at work here. The lift lock has two tubs full of water. It doesn't matter how many boats are in each or how much the boats weigh, because the boats displace their own weight in water. If you add a ton of boats to one of the tubs, a ton of water leaves the tub, and the contents of the tub weigh the same. That means the lock operates the same regardless of the number or weight of boats in it. But there's also some clever engineering that allows these locks to work without any power. Each tub sits atop a metal pole, and under the poles there's a hydraulic system connecting them together, so that if one comes down, the other is forced up. There's a valve that can be closed to block the flow of hydraulic fluid and keep them in position. Now, if the two tubs weighed the same, they would be perfectly balanced, and they wouldn't go up or down unless you used some power to move them. If only you could make the top tub heavier, then gravity would do the work for you. But of course, 
the tubs take turns being at the top or at the bottom, so you can't just make one of them heavier. The clever bit is that they're designed so that the tub that's rising stops a bit below the level of the upper canal. When water flows into the top tub to equalize the water level with the upper canal, that makes the top tub heavier. When you're ready for them to move, you just open the valve I mentioned earlier. The extra weight of the top tub makes it fall, and through the hydraulic system, it pushes the bottom one up. Peterborough has one of the two lift locks on this canal. The one behind me, lock 36, is the other one. It's in Kirkfield. This one isn't as tall as the Peterborough lock. This is about 15 meters, whereas the Peterborough one's about 20 meters. But otherwise, they're pretty similar. So let's move along and look at a very different type of lock. I'm in a little place called Big Chute. There was supposed to have been a set of conventional locks built here, but the First World War got in the way, and that was a higher priority. So instead, they built a temporary marine railway at this location. After the war, they planned on replacing it with a set of conventional locks, but a recession got in the way. So instead, they upgraded and enlarged it. This carriage behind me dates from 1923. There was another marine railway elsewhere on the Trent Severn waterway that was built in 1919 to a similar design. In the 1960s, it was replaced with a conventional set of locks, and there were plans to do the same thing here. But again, circumstances got in the way. There's an invasive parasitic species called a sea lamprey that's been spreading throughout the Great Lakes. I'll spare you the picture because it will haunt your nightmares. But if that's what you really want, look this up and don't say I didn't warn you. The sea lamprey had been decimating fish stocks throughout the Great Lakes as it spread, and it was discovered just downstream from here. Nobody wanted a replacement of this to be a good way for it to spread, but it was observed that as the marine railway carriage came out of the water, the sea lampreys rapidly dropped off, making a marine railway an effective deterrent to sea lamprey migration. So, in 1978, a newer, larger marine railway opened here. It's just over there. Let's go have a look. And here it is, Lock 44, the Big Chute Marine Railway. Yes, it's still called a lock, even though the principle of operation is completely different. The cradle runs on rails which extend down into the water at both ends. With the cradle in the water at one end, boats float in and are moored to the cradle. Unlike a lift lock, the cradle doesn't hold any water, so there's no need to transport a big heavy tub of water just the cradle and the boats. When it gets to the other end, the cradle goes back into the water, the boats are unmoored, and they can float away. As you can see, even though the tracks are on quite a slope, the cradle stays mostly level. There's a clever trick here, too. There are two sets of rails on either side, one just inside the other, and each end of the cradle runs on a different pair of rails. And in this photo, you can see that the rails can be at quite different heights, but they're set up so that one set of rails at one end of the cradle is at about the same height as the other set of rails at the other end of the cradle. Thanks to the two sets of rails, the angle of the cradle can be controlled so it can tilt slightly when going into and out of the water, but remain close to level for the rest of the journey, even as the cradle ascends or descends. And there you have it. A quick tour of this waterway and its various types of locks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe.